this video is going to be all about chucks. I've got a three jaw chuck on the lathe at the minute. I'm going to take it off and put my collar chuck on. First thing I do, I put a piece of board on the bed to protect the bed in case I drop the chuck. Chuck screwed on. I'm going to put the lathe in the back here. Put the chuck key in. That's all it takes. The threads in the register on this lathe, it's the heart of the lathe. If that gets damaged, or the slightest piece of dirt gets between there and the chuck, the chuck won't run through. Make sure it's nice and clean, look at it, no damage on it. Drop of oil. Same with the chute I'm going to put on. Make sure it's nice and clean. Screw it on. That's all it takes. The chuck I put on, it's a homemade chuck, collar chuck, it takes AR32 collars. Once again, make sure all that's clean. Say the note that's going to be clean as well. That's a collet. Spring expanding collet, they're excellent. Some clips in there. I'm going to make a chuck key for my four jaw chuck. I've got a bit of silver steel. I'm just going to use a high speed steel tool to machine this. Nothing about our high speed steel. Just send the bar off first. Bar 6.6 of an inch, I want it down to half inch. So I want 50 thou a side. Put a power feed on as well, that's what it's for. It always pays you to engage the power feed with a tool well away from the job. Then you wouldn't get any nasty surprises if it's going in the wrong direction. Everything looks fine. A touch in there, zero of gauge, 10 thou, so take 20 thou of it. Go along, one more, two for an inch. Not 
up, try to go where I'm doing. Check my dimension. Twenty thousand to come off. I'll slow the feed down. Five thousand foot now. Ten thousands left to go up. I'll slip down some more. A five thou cut. Dead on half inch. The size isn't that critical, but what I do when I'm making a part like this, I try and make it to a dead size, and it's good practice for machining down to a size. Like you see, it's only a chuck key, a square machining on the end to fit the four jaw chuck. Which is the clever bit. What I've got, I've got an ER32 holder on the end of a bit of square stock. I've also got one on the end of a bit of hexi bar. And you can mount it into here, go into the milling machine and put a square on the end. Once I get the square on the end, I've also got a even silver steel temp at the end of the harden the end of the bar so it won't wear away. Right, we'll come onto the mill now. Machine is square on the end of the bar. Snug out of the vase. Got a stop on the vase. So we're going to set that. So I've got a stop on the. I've got a stop on the block, which means I can loosen the vase off, turn it over, and it'll go back in the same place. Take the collet up. What it means now, I'll machine it flat on here, loosen it off, turn it over, 90 degrees machine and that flat, then you get a square. Of course you could have a flat on opposite sides, I could use my hexi one, and have six, or three, get the chuck out, put the collet in. It's quite a handy tool, easy to make. It's a socket, 
well done to a bit of ball with a cut my head in. So you've got a hammer on one end and a socket on the other end that fits your draw ball. I put a spindle lock on this, makes it a lot easier, easier for tightening things. The centre hasn't got to be spot on the centre. It's a cut out wider than the, the flat I'm going to put on here. Uh, we'll start it away and ease it up till we're just touching. Just touching there. Zero the Z axis. Lock the Y axis off. Right, I might have to chuck up. I need to take 115 thou off this in four places to give us a square. The square's got to be 270 thou, that should fit the chuck. So I'll run zero there. That's locked. I'm going to set the stop up. So I can only machine up to that stop, that will give us the length of the square I want. Lock the Z axis off. Spread the end off. Two hundred and seventy thousand, just what I wanted. We'll machine the two faces, then we'll have one square, then we can harden it. Up against the stop, tighten the vase, snug it down. This up, I get a better finish. I need to put coolant on, lock the Z axis. I'm going to finish up with a fail anyway. as well, you can transfer it into the vase. Nice safe edge file. Just round off the corners. it's got to fit into. All I've done, I've just rounded, really rounded the corners off. Nice fit. You don't want it too slack, you don't want it too tight. I have another chuck here. This is the chuck that came with me lathe. I don't know if you can pick it up. But the square, it's actually got a crack in there. I think what's happened here is someone has used a chuck key that was too small and the leverage has burst the screw will open. Right, the plan is to harden the end of the chuck key to stop it wearing away. This is silver steel. To harden silver steel, you heat it up red hot, quench it in water. 
That's it, that takes it to full hard. It's that hard brittle it would actually break. And then as you can that, as you see, brought down soft. into the water. Fast start. Not quite like that but into the water anyway. Right, it's cooled off. Try your test. That's that's hard. Really hard. The fire, the fire's not marking it. That would be brittle now, it would snap straight off. So now we need to temper it. At the minute, the end of the chucky is full hard, what they call glass hard. It's that hard, it's brittle, it will actually snap. So what we're going to do, we're going to heat it up and watch for the colours running. You can see some colour there. What I'm looking for is the end of this to go blue. That's the colour you would temper the spring to. Once it goes blue, I'm going to quench it in oil. They used to quench in wheel oil or sperm oil. But now all I can get is 1040 engine oil. I think it'll do the same job. So we'll warm it up. Quench it in there, test it again with a fail. Watch for the colour, the blue colour. Start to change colour there now. The blue tinge, see the blue tinge? Into the oil. Lovely. You can see the blue like a purpley blue on the end. I'll try it again with a fail. I couldn't mark it before with a fail, it was that hard. No I can't. So it's taking it from being glass hard to uh, Hard, it should be tough. Hopefully. Fucking warm. Right, I've got it back in the mill machine in the block again. All I want to do is find the centre of the bar so I can drill a hole in for the T handle for the chuck key. Once again, I've got my favourite edge finder, pushing a tool for the lathe. I'm just taking that collet up. Right, right, so the way I simply wind it in till it touches the bearing. The bearing's touching there, it's starting to slow down. As a slight run out in the chuck, if I had to be 100% accurate, I would use a collet. But for what this has to do, it's a zero y axis on the DRO. Lift it up into the side. Back down, wind it out, nice and gently, it just touches, there we go. We've got 47.2 mil, call it 47, half 47 is 23 and a half, 23.6. The yep, we're in the centre, it even looks like it's in the centre. Centre drill, bit of cutting oil. Put a big nut in your cutting oil, stop it not getting knocked over and falling over. Right, I've got a bit of 8mm bar I'm going to use for the handle. I've got a 7.9mm drill.
just a job. Right, we've got our T-handle, it's a short T-handle. This is actually a chuck key that I'm going to use in conjunction with the original chuck key. one I made earlier, it's actually got a longer T in it, that's the one for tightening, this is the one for adjusting. I'm going to try setting things up in the 4 jaw chuck using two chuck keys. I'll do that in a later video and see how we'll get on. Quite pleased with that. <laughs> 